first thing you want to do after you import your footage is create a new layer. And uh, sorry if I go a little fast. As I go, I'll call out what the shortcuts are that I'm using. So create a new layer, Control Y, and uh, you want to turn off the visibility. And then just grab the pen tool, hit the tilde key, and just go in there. Here's one of the first tips that will really help you while rotoing in AE. It's the page up and page down buttons. They also take you frame by frame, uh, the page down taking you forward and the page up taking you backwards. The first thing you want to do with your lightsaber is make a four point mask. Like so. And depending on your shot, uh, you can play around with your mask color so that you have something contrasty, so you have something you know that pops out and you can easily grab it and recognize it when you need it. Another good idea is always just to keep the mask layer the color of whatever your saber is going to be. Um, so yeah, there's that. And this is the most important step to rotating lightsabers ever. Hit the stopwatch to start the keyframes. There's nothing more annoying than going backwards in time and you have not been saving keyframes for everything. Once you've done that, you just want to go frame by frame. Try when you can to just move the entire shape or move the, the edges here so that the width stays the same. You don't really want to get lightsaber cores that get super skinny like uh, the roto they did for the original films. You want to try and keep it consistent as much as you can to avoid a really animated look. You want it to look smooth and realistic. We're not going to worry about rounding the edges. That's something you want to save for the very last step. And uh, most people, uh, they tend to fan the, the top edge only, but there's going to be a lot of times when you have like the hilt over here um, and the top of it you can see the emitter, the hole, and you want to round that part too because it is coming out of a round hole. That's what she said. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. In fact, I'm going to spend no time on this. Things to look out for, uh, like this. I was talking about how the lightsaber kind of disappears right here. You can see it. You can tell the end is over here. And then after that, if I go backwards, uh, it really just, you know, it gets lost. You can kind of tell here, but these in-between spots, it gets lost because the whole thing is just really washed out. And uh, one thing you can do to try and make it easier on yourself, let me make my mask again. Let's do another one. Um, one thing you can do is to play with this exposure control right here. Um, so, you know, it helps because if you, you know, kind of move it back and forth or just kind of toggle it on and off. Um, you can see detail that you can't see, you know, after just staring at the screen for so long. So if you zoom in, like right here, it's like super, super minuscule detail, but you can kind of see the color changes right here. So it gives you an idea of where the prop is ending. So it actually goes like all the way over here. Another thing you can do is to stop on the last frame where you can really tell where it is. Go forward some to the next time you can clearly tell like this and then you just want to go back and now that you have that you can kind of use that as a guide to see where the end should be so you want to try and move just the edges. Try not to move the points too much if you don't have to. And that's just a general tip for rotoscoping. To avoid boiling edges, you know, or in this case, just having the length or the width of the lightsaber change too frequently. You want to get used to using Control Z and page up and page down to go frame by frame. Now, I do want to point out that I don't actually roto as much in After Effects as I used to. Um, I actually started using Mocha just because when you're rotating lightsabers they're not always going to be this perfect rectangular shape. You can see it kind of 
curves down because it's moving in Z space. So in Mocha, you can, you know, you can do things that you can't really do in After Effects. You have a lot more control like that. So if I wanted to, I could, you know, basically what I would use as the fanning point, uh, I can now bend in and then kind of curve those edges, and then it'd be smooth like that, and you get that nice curve. Um, some people are just gonna go over it, like they just totally ignore that, and it's not really recommended. When you when you see it in motion, there's a big difference. It, it you can tell when the roto is following the natural path of the blade. Otherwise, you're gonna get sort of a choppy animated look if you just kind of cut corners like that. If you're in a pinch, you know, go ahead and do it. But if you have the time, um, you know. So the next step after you finish rotoing frame by frame would be to uh, round the edges. Most people will fan their edges really kind of bloated uh, to the point where it, it almost looks like a popsicle or uh, like the tip of a master's or a master replica lightsaber. Um, so you want to use it sparingly. Um, another little detail some people don't really do, and I guess you don't really need to do it you know, all the time, um, it's not a huge deal, is I like to round both ends because the lightsaber is coming from a round uh, hole. It's coming from this emitter on the hilt. So ideally you want to do something like this where you kind of curve it, you know, even though it's fanning out, you're simulating it coming out of that, that hole. It's being blurred as well. It's being stretched. Grab the pen tool, do this side. The bigger the fan, I'd say you can go a little bit farther, but really you don't want to go anywhere like this where it, it becomes more of a mound. You want it to still kind of have you know, really sharp turns, if you will, or corners that are not square, but they're just round enough. Like that. And another thing you want to do, um, especially when you can't tell where the end is, is I always like to kind of guide the the rounded edge so that the the fatter side of it is aimed more towards the direction in which the blade is moving. So what I mean by that is if you go forward in time it's going up this way so you give the curve more of an angle towards the top each time you go and basically you just kind of you know keep it going towards its final destination instead of just having it fan straight out so after you've rounded all your edges, whether it be the top um, and the bottom or just the top, select your layer, turn on the uh, opacity, and uh, just create another solid here. Make it black and just name it I don't know, BG. Put it below the core layer and then select both of them and press Control shift c which will pre-compose it and we're just going to name this uh, red core and then uh, just open that pre-comp and then in here I'm going to teach you how to do a glow method that uh, Nate Cowie uses so the first thing you're going to want to do to do the glow is create a new adjustment layer and apply fast blur and repeat edge pixel so it doesn't blur the ends as if it's not going off screen. And then duplicate it. Let's see. Control D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, duplicate it a bunch of times. And then let's bring up the blur on this first layer and let's call this, uh, let's call this core blur. Now, this one, we're not going to change the transfer mode or anything. We're going to leave this on normal so that it's not adding anything to the, the roto. It's just blurring it. You want to bring up the fast blur, and I just press UU on the keyboard so that it bring up you know any effect. And then uh, do the same here, except you're going to alt-click the stopwatch for that blurriness and pick whip it to the original one and then after all the stuff that it types in you're going to want to put times 10 and what that's going to do is multiply 
whatever the value is for this first one by 10. Um, so if I put one, it'll just give you 10 for the next one and so forth. And we're gonna do this for the rest of them and it's gonna go up and make it a little bit blurred each time and we'll change the transparency so it's not too strong. Um, when your saber is close to camera, you wanna have it at the blur level of three. If it's, if it's out of focus, then I guess you can go to four. You don't really wanna push it too much or the main core right here, as you can see, it'll get more gray and you wanna keep it white. Two will be good for this scene. So yeah, once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and bring up the next adjustment layers, fast blur, stopwatch, and then pick whip this one. You don't wanna pick whip the, the first one, you wanna you know, keep multiplying it as you go. So pick whip this blur, and then you wanna set it to times four. So now you have something at 80, and you're gonna set this one to screen. And we're gonna set all the rest of them after this to screen. So every adjustment layer above the core layer, you wanna select it and set it to screen. After you've picked with that one, again, do the same thing for the next one. And then you wanna set this one to be times two. And then this one to be times two as well. Oops. Times two. And then this one two times two. Now, I'm gonna go back down from the top one and I'm going to change all the transparency for each one. So the top one, you wanna make it 10. The one below it, you wanna make it 10 as well. The one below that, you wanna set it to 30. The one below the 30% should be at 50. There we go. So now you have your Saber Glow. Um, so let's jump back into here and we can set this to screen. It's going to guess where I put this. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Like that. And okay, that looks good. Um, now you're going to want to do the coloring. Now there's a few different ways and different methods that you can apply color to your lightsaber now that you have it done. The method I like using is by color balance and you want to turn on preserve luminosity. And uh, so you want to mess with the highlights and the midtones. You don't want to mess with the shadows too much or at all because it'll give you some you know some undesirable effects if you want to put a little bit into the red that's fine because you're going to find that with red it ends up being a little bit pinkish so sometimes i'll go i don't want to go over like 10 or 15 but a thing that really helps with any color is putting in a bit of another color so for red you might want to put in a little bit of green for the midtone or put it in for the highlight so it makes it a little bit you know hotter Not too much, like that. Um, if you wanted to do a blue, of course, you know, you'd up the blue and you'd up the blue, but if you want a Star Wars blue, uh, you definitely want to add some green in there, something like 40 in the mid-tone and then 30 up here, like so. And of course, if you want to do cyan, um, then you just up the green a lot more. Um, you could almost take it to 100 as well. Um, really, this is just up to you, um, but you want to play around with keeping the whatever your secondary color is in the midtones a little bit lower, and you can make it a bit higher in the highlights so that it gives it more of that hot look towards the center of the core. Um, 
Another thing you want to keep in mind is uh, this. You see this banding here where the colors are, you know, it's very apparent, the separation of the gradient. Um, if you can, work in, you know, 8 bits per channel. But uh, if you just want to work really fast, just tick it on at the end, uh, right before you roto to 16 by holding down Alt and then just clicking it. And it'll give you a much smoother result. So this is the basis of rotoing a lightsaber and doing the effect. Um, there you go, that looks pretty good. Duplicate the layer with the color. Um, apply another fast blur and put it above the color so it'll receive the color. Change it to add. Turn the opacity down to like, mm, let's try 15. And then just blur it out really, really, really big. And this will kind of give it a, uh, a look of uh, interactive lighting around. It'll just kind of extend the glow a little bit farther. You can put the values on that if you want to. Um, you don't want to do something too strong. Otherwise, you'll have something like this. And when it swings around, you'll just see this giant circle. Um, so yeah, you want it to be subtle. You don't want to overdo it. Another little thing um, that a lot of people don't really think to do but helps is to put grain back over your lightsaber, depending on how much grain is already in the shot itself. Um, you can either, you know, match the grain, and there's a few ways to do that. You could, you know, come over here and apply match grain, set the source layer to the footage, increase the intensity a bit, And so your glow isn't going to be, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to kind of be splotchy enough just so that it, it matches in with the grain from the camera. So that'll help sell it a little bit more as well. Now match grain is a really uh, CPU intensive effect. So you don't want to take that on until you're, you know, about to render. Same with the 16-bit uh, setting. Um, another thing you can do in the end is apply uh, a white solid layer in here, press Ctrl Y, and we'll call this one Flicker, or Flick. And uh, this is just a nice touch at the end um, for when the lightsaber is relatively still, when it's not, you know, moving around too much. Um, I just because, you know, it's there. I'll just duplicate the layer and I'll put it over the lightsaber effect for the entire thing. Because whether or not you'll notice it, you know, at least it's there. You never know when it might look good in a shot where there's a bunch of motion and then there's little motion. So it's good just to have it there. So what you want to do first is, once you have that layer, uh, make sure it's white. Make sure it's comp size. And set it to classic color dodge. And then what you want to do is you want to go to the first frame of the composition and change the opacity to zero and hit the stopwatch and create a keyframe. Go to the end of your comp and set a keyframe there. And then hold down shift, select the other keyframe. And then what you want to do is go to the wiggler. I'm going to pull it up right here. Wiggler. <coughs> And the only thing you need to change in here are these two settings. Just leave this on temporal and smooth. Don't worry about those. Um, of course, the faster way is to alt-click the opacity stopwatch and type, you know, wiggle parentheses, I don't know, uh, 15 and 20 or something like that. But I'll teach you how to use the wiggler right here because most people don't even know it's there. And they're like, eh, no, I don't learn expressions. So it's right here. The frequency, uh, like I said, you want to make it like 15 or 20 per second, depending on how, you know, how obvious the flicker needs to be. 
make the magnitude somewhere around 15 to 20 as well. And hit apply. And I'll just render out a little preview right here so you can see it where it's not moving. Uh, see, that looks all right. Um, if you don't like it, you can always just, you know, hit control Z, undo, and up the frequency maybe. Boom. That looks good. Uh, probably the magnitude is a little bit uh, too high. It's popping a little bit. Um, or not, depending on what you want to do. Another way to do the glow is using Daniel Broadway's plugin here called Real Glow, which gives you a pretty nice effect very quickly. It's a little more render intensive, but it's a lot simpler than, you know, creating six adjustment layers. All you have to do is apply it to the roto layer after you're done select softer for the tint mode and then change the color accordingly so I have a few ideas that I wanted to share with you and uh, just some things to remember um, about this way why you should be doing your lightsaber this way so let's take a look at a picture from episode 3 for whatever reason um, they opted to obscure the glow not just the core of the lightsaber but the glow as well of the lightsaber behind everything so what you get is this kind of cut out looking thing and it's not very realistic the reason the lightsabers even have a glow in the first place is because it's an optical effect it's something that's happening because you know the lens of the camera or if it was real life you know with our eyes it would glow like if you see you know any other supremely bright light source um, so to block it like that makes no sense, especially considering when you look at something like the the original duels. Uh, in episode you know five or six, you go back and look at those, and it was probably by accident that they did it, but uh, uh, maybe not. But uh, yeah, that it just does not look good. Um, an interesting thing here is they're receiving light wrap or there's you know getting glow from the lava behind them um but again still not from the lightsaber they went through and they rotoed everything to obscure the lightsaber core um and that's a lot more work and it's not even you know more accurate you you definitely want to make sure you're rotoing those things that obscure the core first and then applying the glow very very last on top of everything um, another neat thing that you can do that I didn't really go over is uh, doing interactive lighting um, as you can see here at first I wasn't sure if it was if it was practical even though I've seen the behind the scenes for this scene over and over uh, but this is probably just a layer that they put on like classic color dodge or I'll show you an example let's say I want to put color on my sleeve here and my glove I could come up here create a new solid pick color like here-ish, that looks good, set it to color dodge, lower it a bit, and then uh, just turn that off for now, and just kind of, I don't know, this is really bad roto, but you'll get the idea, um, so something like that. Turn the layer back on, and uh, let's feather it a little bit. Now, obviously, you know, that looks horrible. So what you'd want to do is kind of, you know, guesstimate from how far the lightsaber is from the thing you want to put the light on, and draw another mask inside of it. Like that. And then bring that up and set it to inverted. Or no. Set it to subtract. And then invert it. And then feather that one out a lot more. So you get something like that. That actually looks pretty good. 
Um, I would do this very sparingly um, because, you know, it's just it's a lot more roto that you'd have to do. For the shots where it'd be the most noticeable, I'd say go for it. Um, yeah, and I even noticed it in uh, in the trailer for The Force Awakens. I noticed there was some interactive lighting going on um, that I'm pretty sure was not just a post effect, but um, it could be. It could just be really good roto. Um, but if you look at his hand here, not those hands. Um, you can see that it's it's really. Uh, it's catching on his on his glove here pretty specifically but it could just be post um, even on the uh, on these snowflakes here you can see it's not just a it's not just a glow that's encompassing everything it's hitting these uh, flakes pretty specifically um, another great shot or an example of this is this one where you can clearly see that it, it's hitting um, his arm here and the top of, you know, his, his bicep and the top of his hood there. Um, and even right here you can kind of see that, you know, is that his lightsaber in the reflection of his eyes? I, I don't know. For clashes, um, if you don't have access to a flare plugin like Optical Flares or No Light Factory, you can get away with doing something like this using a, uh, Make like a white solid, then create a create a circular mask around the impact point. And then you can play with the expansion and the feather. And you want to set it to uh, to add. Fan that out. And uh, you kind of want to make it big when it's near the screen. Make that radius pretty big. The color of it is sort of a gold, so and then you want to just kind of tint it and give it a reddish orange glow like that and then animate the opacity and the shape like this can actually just move the expansion down each time. By a lot. And then for when it's a sustained uh, clash like this, it's always a good idea to um, either animate the opacity flickering yourself or you can you know apply the wiggle the same way you did the lightsaber just on the opacity of this layer itself instead of the mask go to the opacity of this layer and then you know wiggle it here or wiggle it you know on the side over there so that it'll kind of flicker and if you're using um, optical flares as a setting and they're already to you know set the speed and the amount of the wiggle I'll preview it to see what this looks like like that yeah so that's the poor man's clash the benefit of doing it this way using a mask is if the clash ends up happening you know like it's obscure to say the clash was over here by uh, by the head. If the clash was happening over here, then I could just bend the mask myself from here and kind of, you know, I can guide the glow a bit better of it. I can kind of decide where the glow is just like this and then you can always if you need it to be brighter you know come in here adjust the tint 
like so. But uh, yeah, ideally you want to use, if you can, optical flares or no light factory and then just go in here and already have one made where it's, uh, where are you? I don't have one made. Go in here, clear everything, bring in a glow and a spike ball. I'm going to squash the spike ball down the side a bit and then change the global color to that golden color like that. Let's see, a little less saturated. Uh, like so. And then even if you want to, it, if it's, you know, a sustain goal, again, this is just a, if it's a sustained class, you want to come over here and set a keyframe for the animation evolution, go forward, set another one, so that it's kind of moving. And then also bring up the uh, speed of the flicker and keep the amount relatively low so it doesn't just turn off. And then um, smooth the sharp. Uh, I prefer smooth, but it's whatever you like. And if it's not enough, then turn both things up like this. Yeah, I prefer smooth. Smooth will give you more uh, fluctuations like that and then of course you know you just animate it um, animate the position of it um, and these lines these really fine lines are not appealing to me so apply a fast blur make them a little less apparent So yeah, aside from that, so your glows, you really want it to, uh, the this method um, that I showed you on how to do the glows, um, it really gives it the appearance of casting light. Um, it looks really, really good, especially when it's being obscured by something and you get that light over top, um, you know, the foreground subject. It looks really, really good. Um, compared to episode 3 lightsabers, which are just chunky monkeys, they have this really thick, defined glow. You know, you can see where the glow begins and ends. The fall off isn't as nice. Here's another good example of some uh, post production interactive lighting done on his face. It's really just a bluish, purplish tint done to the uh, mid tones and the highlights on the shot. It's not. If it was an actual light, you'd see a lot more on the side of his face here. The entire thing would just be light, even, you know, up to his forehead. You just have light spilling everywhere. So, yeah, that's about it. The things you should really focus on um, that'll separate your lightsaber effect from every other one on YouTube is uh, getting those the, the edges rounded the correct way, you know, not letting them too too bulgy, just, you know, keep it accurate to the arc of the saber um, or whatever's happening in the shot so the animation plays back smooth. You can tell when you play it back the difference between, uh, you know, one that follows the natural path of something filmed and one that's hand animated. The colors, try not to keep them too saturated because it'll just make the glow look really thick and it'll throw off, you know, the entire process of applying that uh, that ratio glow uh, and again make sure that you you're exporting at 16 bit per channel otherwise you're gonna get those those banding lines on your lightsabers and it's not very pretty especially when you go to upload it on YouTube and YouTube does its compression thing it's just gonna drop more on there so do everything you can beforehand and even the grain Adding noise or grain to your footage, um, not just lightsabers, but to your footage in general that you're uploading to YouTube will help negate some of that blocky, compressed look that YouTube is going to do because it's going to compress your stuff as much as it can. I'll link to a few more resources in the description such as Saber Sound Effects and Ryan Weber's original tutorial. Um, I've got some tutorials planned, some title sequence stuff, and breakdowns of VFX shots from past shorts of mine. I'm not sure on the release schedule, but I'll try and keep them coming out frequently, 
If you have questions or if there's something you want to see covered in a tutorial, let me know in the comments below. I'll probably even start to delve into composing music and working in Kako's Reaper, as well as doing some tutorials in Imagineer Systems Mocha. Subscribe, like, and share. That's all for this tutorial, and now it's time for you to escape from post.